Hi, everybody, and welcome to Discovering the Records of the Enslaved, working together to find, connect, and remember. I'm Sherry hudson Passy, and with me is my great friend, Sharon Batiste-Gillens. And the purpose of this presentation is to continue the conversation that we had at RootsTech last year. Now, we really wanted to meet with you <laughs> again at RootsTech and, and have this conversation. We've got 20 minutes to talk about some responsibilities and some basic practices that we need to have as we work together as descendants of the enslaved and enslavers. First of all, I would like for Sharon to introduce herself to you. Well, hello, and thanks for joining us today. I'm Sharon Batiste Gillens, and I am the descendant of an enslaved person, persons, and I also have DNA. Uh, connections to one of my enslavers. And I am Sherry Hudson Passy. I'm from Carolina Girl Genealogy, and I am a descendant of enslavers. So Sharon and I met together and decided what a wonderful opportunity this it would is. be to uh, talk and share and, and get the word out to the community, how we can get the information in these records out. So our purpose today is to, to help you talk about and think about some of these things and then help us, we wanna hear from you. So first of all, we're gonna talk about, you've made that discovery. You found that record, either your ancestor is listed as property or you've discovered that your ancestor owned human property and, and what that feels like, but how we need to not hide it, especially if we've discovered that our ancestors were um, slave owners what we need to do with this information. So that's what we're gonna be talking about. There's a lot of responsibility that goes into that discovery. What is my responsibility as a researcher when I discover the records of the enslaved? Well, it pretty much is the same for every mm -hmm. researcher when they discover any record, which is to preserve the records, to conserve the records, uh, to make sure they're existing for the future. But in this case, what we wanna focus on is sharing the record. That's making it accessible to others. But this is a very touchy subject. So when we start to think about it, we then consider the options and the risk. We don't have to do anything. We can do nothing. And then that information remains hidden and families lose an opportunity to reunite. And that's what this is all about. Some people, want to locate descendants. But you may have reservations about that or concerns about how to do that or whether you should do that. And most of all, we all would have questions about just exactly how to go about that. And this is what this uh, uh, presentation mm -hmm. is all about. Right, and I was just gonna add that, especially on this, this, the descendants of enslavers it's hard it is hard to pick up those documents and and look at them and have the courage sometimes we've got to wrap our heads around it and have the courage to share to get the information out there's fear and things involved and so we're going to we're going to move forward and we're going to talk about the different things that we can do and you know sherry even though uh you believe as the descendant of an enslaver that there is fear and concern. We as descendants of enslaved people have fear and concern as well because we don't know how we'll be received when we uh, try to make that approach to mm -hmm. the descendant of an enslaver. So I think there is a concern on both sides. And so that's why we wanted to come together and try to find how to do this in a way that shows sensitivity to the complexity of the issues, as well as ethically with respect for the other family and for our family and reuniting our family as well. So we're thinking best practices and who best to start this conversation <laughs> than us as genealogists. We're out there seeking the information. We're the one that found it. Absolutely. And I think that if we can discuss best practices within the community and come up with, you know, like, DNA, you've got best practices in DNA. Genealogy mm -hmm. research in general has best practices. So it helps if somebody asks a question and says, I found this document, what do I do with it? Aha, we've got some best practices. This is a good way to 
contact people. This is a good way to handle it. These are some things we can do, but we just don't want to tell you what <laughs> the best exactly. practices are. We would like to hear from you. So make sure you join in. Um, uh, I'm hoping that there's going to be a chat that's attached to, to this presentation. If not, we will share and uh, we have in our syllabus our contact information. And of course, we showed you the slides with our contact information. So we really want to hear from you, not just what we think, <laughs> but what the community thinks. Yeah, that's right. We want to share our experiences, but we want it to be interactive. We want to hear from you. So how can I approach the descendant of someone who owned my ancestor? It's a subject that I've had to deal with. And so the first thing I'd like to do is to acknowledge the complexity of the situation, acknowledge that it's a, an awkward conversation. Mm -hmm. And then I would also like to declare my intent. My intent is to reunite my family more than anything else. And then I would like to reassure them that I don't have any hidden agenda, that I'm not coming for anything except mm -hmm. to reunite my family. And there's no blame or guilt that I'm like, that I want to uh, lay on them as the descendant of the family. Absolutely. And I'm just thinking about the times that I have been contacted because, as I said, my ancestors own slaves. And so I have been approached. I have had that contact, that little email that's come through. And some people have been a little <laughs> pushy and demanding. And some people have been um, very kind and very, you know, we just need to work together type of thing. So you need to realize how would you like somebody to approach you? Right. Think about how you'd like somebody to approach you. These are after all personal papers. Absolutely. So how can I approach the descendant of someone who my ancestor owned? Now that's a, that's hard too. You've got to step back for a few minutes especially if it's the first time that you found a document and you're just discovering that your ancestor owned people. You've got to wrap your mind around that narrative. It's something different that you are putting in your head. You've got to come to terms with it. And then once you come to terms with it and you understand the nature of the information that you have and knowing that this may be the only place this information is for somebody else to be able to find their ancestor, Especially as a researcher, especially as a genealogist, you understand that you need to contact family members and ask them share. they would like to share. Absolutely. In a way that I found this record. I believe these people may belong to your family. You know, can we work together? Um, but we also need to remember as we're contacting people that nobody has to respond to you. We can't make people respond. We can't make demands. So we need to come to this calmly with patience and understand that no matter which side you're coming from, you've got to give the other people time to wrap their minds around it. You really do. Because for a lot of people, they want to hide the information, especially the descendants of slave owners. They want to hide it. So if you're coming and asking, you know, and saying things like, well, your ancestor owned my ancestor, you've got to be careful, you know, or I've got to be careful how I approach because I don't want it to look like I'm saving your, you know, your family by going through and getting this information. So we've got to be really careful and people can be offended. So I think we need to take things. And if you're a prayer, prayerful person, do it prayerfully, but do it in a way that you would want to be contacted. Approach, yourself. right. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody knows it's a difficult situation. It's right. awkward. Mm -hmm. It's awkward. It's hard. It's hard. A lot of the, it is hard because the nation mm -hmm. has not come to come to uh, oh, accept, not at all, come to grips with this, accept it as a reality mm -hmm. and as having lifelong consequences absolutely generation intergenerational intergenerational you know and some people some people know it's in their family but they've hidden it and now all of a sudden dna <laughs> or DNA. just or just paper research is discovering things that they have been trying to hide and so that's difficult and there's a lot of denial and it can't be true going on so why don't you talk to us a little bit about uh dna well, you know, I think DNA, from my experience, really raises the stakes even higher. Um, from my experience, I had contacted a, a person, a descendant of an enslaver, 
um, and we had exchanged information about um, the fact that my ancestors were enslaved by her ancestors. But when I just kind of matter factly added the fact that um, we also shared DNA, I was ghosted. Mm -hmm. And so it was at that point that I realized I did something that I should not have at that moment. It's not that I shouldn't have done it. I should not that I shouldn't have said it, but I needed to go about it in a much more careful way. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I've thought of uh, ways that I could come to them in a way that builds a relationship mm -hmm. before a much more, much stronger relationship of trust before I um, actually shared that information. Once there's trust, I think that uh, you're much more likely to have a continued relationship than one um, that is cut off because they don't know exactly what you want. They don't know exactly where you're coming from. What is your intent? Do you have mm -hmm. underlying underlying uh, intentions? Absolutely. So building Absolutely. that relationship is really important. Oh, I, I agree. Now, I um, have some interesting things with DNA going on. Uh, there's no family lore, which most of the time there's not. Um, but as a child of the South, I should not have been surprised <laughs> to find out that there is African-American DNA that runs in, in, in me. And so it's on my maternal side. I've not been approached yet by someone who says we have a DNA connection. I have been approached by people who say that your slave owning ancestor appears to have owned my ancestor and can we work together, but I have not at this point had somebody reach out to me through DNA and I'm really hoping that that happens. In the meantime, in the meantime, I am trying to sort things out on my own by making, you know, little matches, which group does this seem to come from? And I, I have a good idea, but paper trails not helping me out. And so far, DNA matches are not helping me out. But I know that there will come a time when I receive something from somebody, because I want to honor that ancestor. That's my ancestor. And I want to honor her. Um, I'm assuming it's a her, <laughs> most likely it's a her. Um, I want to honor her. So we've got to, as we said before, we've got to realize that people need to take some time. They don't know. They don't know that they've got, you know, their DNA tests come back and there's things in there that they didn't realize. And for some people it's a shock and they don't want to deal with it. For some people it's, um, they just need some time. They just need a time. Like we said, we're changing their narrative of their family tree. And we need to be, we need to let them have that time. And one other thing that I'd like to add on <laughs> that, Sherry, is that we went out seeking this information. Yes. So the people who uh, learn about this may not have been uh, seeking it at all. Even if they put their DNA in a database, they didn't intend to find this information out. Mm -hmm. We're looking for it. And exactly. so we have a, a different mindset when it comes to discoveries like this. Mm -hmm. we have a different level of sensitivity. Absolutely. And we may be dealing with people who were born in a different era, mm -hmm. who have grown up with different uh, values. So uh, patience is definitely uh, a virtue when it comes to this. Absolutely. So, but we still have all these obstacles. Yes. What are the obstacles in, a, in our way that we're just talking about that prevent us from sharing information? Well, I know a lot of those obstacles are emotion. We kind of oh, hit yes. on those a little bit. Fear. I mean, you find this information, you're like, what if somebody finds out that my ancestor own slaves and how embarrassing and what a terrible person they must have been. I mean, you just all this stuff just starts going through your mind. And, and frankly, there are people that we've heard of that want to hide this information. They're willing to just completely ignore a whole part of their tree because they don't want this information to come out. Um, so I really think that one of the biggest obstacles is fear emotion, something emotion based. And that, that, that emotion can happen on either side. You know, it I'm can. just scared to reach out, you know, to, to somebody that I think whose ancestor owned, you know, my ancestor. So it can happen either way. And in today's world, um, social media, I think is a, a very real fear because uh, for someone to announce that and put it out on social media really opens up uh, an individual to a lot of scrutiny and judgment. People can be very cruel on social mm -hmm. media. So if I could uh, suggest that one thing to do is not to reveal that type of information 
on social media. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just, and, and a lot of people are afraid though, that if they contact the person, they're going to let it out and then maybe they'll be shunned in the community or exactly. something will happen. Something will happen to them or their property or those business of backlash. Things. That's a yes. real thing. Yes. Community right. backlash. Absolutely. So what can, what can each group do to support the other? How can we overcome some of these obstacles? Well, I would say, uh, through uh, empathy. Mm -hmm. Empathy is the greatest thing that we can extend to the other side. We inherited these circumstances. We didn't create them, but we uh, have an opportunity to do something about them. With empathy, I think that we can uh, approach it and create a relationship that will allow us to reconstruct our families. And, and if we stick to that as, the, as our compass, I think that people can get further along. Absolutely. And I think we've always got to keep in the back of our minds, no matter what research we're doing on what group or line, we are never responsible for our ancestors' actions. That is just not on us. And like you said, though, we can take the records that we find even though the circumstances that created these records were not the best, we can do something positive by helping to connect families. There are many families that could never be connected together if we don't share our information. Absolutely. They're stuck without our help. And it goes either way. It goes both you, ways. That's right. You may have something that will help me break a brick wall on my ancestor and the same, I could have something that could help you break the brick wall on your ancestor. So as a descendant of enslaved people, I've had to really research the enslavers. A lot of times I know more about that family yes. than they know about their family. Exactly. And so if I'm sharing with them, mm -hmm. then I'm helping them to discover and reunite their family as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what is the best thing that can happen from working together as descendants of slaveholders and descendants of enslaved people? We get a better understanding of each other. Mm -hmm. Um we learn how to work together. Mm -hmm. We heal yes. from some of the, the uh, latent pain mm -hmm. that has gone from generation to generation to generation. We're able to open ourselves up, to be open to the truth, mm -hmm. acknowledge the truth of our past and try to move past it. Exactly. And you know, we, we unite families. We yes. connect families back together who have been missing one another, those links for decades, you know, for generations, we can connect these families back together so people know who they are, where they came from, and they know the names of their ancestors. And that's releasing those names, getting those names out is such an important part of this whole, this whole process. And, you know, DNA families are important, but plantation families are also important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, those people have shared the same existence, even though their circumstances exactly. were different. They still were plantation families. Exactly. So where do we go from here? How do we continue this conversation? What's next? <laughs> we need to hear from you. And that's why we call this an interactive um, session. Right. We need to hear from you because we are just two people with experiences. We know you have experiences too. And from mm -hmm. those experiences, we can build a set of best practices so that all of us, all, all of us in the genealogical community can have something to fall back on when we uh, uh, have to address this situation. And we all will have to address it, whether in our own families or in dealing with client work. Exactly. Are there different platforms that you would like to see? What, you know, how can we share this information? We want to hear all of your ideas so that we can come back hopefully next time. Yes. Tech and meet in person and face to face, face to face and continue this conversation. So the important thing is how can we help you, whether you're a descendant of an enslaver, if you're a descendant of the enslaved, if you've just gotten a DNA match that you're not you know, you don't know how to deal with. What can we do? How can we help you? What conversation do we need to have to continue this to help you be able to share and connect? So we're encouraging you to use our contact information and communicate with me with us about how you have uh, had to handle this. What were your experiences? What are your suggestions? And then how can we get this out to the entire genealogical community? 
Absolutely. We just all need to work together and we miss not being with you in person Me too. so that we can, you know, bounce ideas off of each other. So it's so important that you just don't watch this and then just let it go. We need to hear from you. The only good thing that I can think about this is that our, um, our session is probably reaching so many more people than even if, even if we were live at Roots Tech. So we're, Absolutely. we're counting on that as a Absolutely. benefit. Absolutely, And, and, you know, it's, it's, this is a worldwide problem. It's exactly. just not a, a Southern problem. It's not just a United States problem. There was slavery all over the world. And so no matter what country you're in, this can help you as you're coming across documents. So with that, I will turn it over to Sharon to say goodbye. <laughs> and well, thank you all so much for joining us. We look forward to hearing from you. Uh, thank you, Sherry, for participating and having having the ability, giving me the ability to join you in this quest. We we came together on this. We met each other on uh, on these terms, and so we're now on a kind of a mission together. So I'm looking forward to the next steps in that. Absolutely. And with that, we would just like to say thank you so thank much. You. Thank Enjoy you. Enjoy the so rest much. of the conference. Absolutely. Thank you so much for watching. And please, 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 we want to hear from you. We don't want to have crickets. <laughs> we want to hear from you <laughs> so that we can move forward and, and meet together and be able to hug one another <laughs> and, and talk this through some more next root stack. But we need your ideas in order to do it. So with that, we will say goodbye and hopefully we will be able to see you soon. Bye everybody. Thank you for watching. Thank you.